Uh, we're going to talk about next-gen dashboards and how we're evolving visualizations for more effective troubleshooting. Some quick introductions. I'm Abhinav Khanna. I'm a technical product manager here at Sumo. Um, and I work on the Kubernetes as well as dashboard teams. With me on stage is Ian Gata. He's a senior UI dev who works out of the Indie office. And he uh, loves to come up with creative visualizations for our dashboards. Here are the three things I hope you'll take away from this talk. Primarily, I hope you'll take away that next-gen dashboards are awesome. That's my goal. Um, and the three reasons why is that you can transform data with ease, isolate patterns quickly, and you get deeper insights effortlessly. We've heard a lot from you guys about what you like in our dashboards, what you use them for today, and where you kind of see them in your DevSecOps life cycles. Some of the highlights that we've heard from you is that you want it to be easier to create dashboards. You want better visualizations with higher visual control. You want better metric support. You want a way to share a report as a PDF. And I realize this is now coming after a keynote where you just saw that, so you know, a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. Um, ways to drill down from a panel to logs, more operators, and higher group by limits in live mode. These are all things that you wanted and you spoke about and you wanted to see improved in our dashboard setup. Monitoring troubleshooting with dashboards is not always easy, but we want to make it better. And some of the things you'll hear us talk about is ways we've been trying to chip away at that problem. So what can we do? We want to focus on empowering the visual story so you can tell the right metrics, the right data, and the right panels to fit the picture of how your problem is evolving and go towards that root cause through that story. And that all begins with dashboards as a first class citizen. No more of that clunkiness of coming from that search page or that metrics page and adding panels to a dashboard and this kind of ad hoc experience way of creating a dashboard. Dashboards are now an object inside of Sumo. You can create them, you can add things to them, you can edit your panels right inside of those dashboards. They live as their own object and that gives you much freer control over that visual story you want to create without that clunkiness of going through another UI. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Ian here, who's going to talk a little bit about how you can tell a visual story through these new dashboards. Thank you, Avi. Uh, audible? Okay. Uh, well, uh, so let me start by this. For example, imagine you just have been uh, debugging one of your production outages, right? You just completed debugging one of your production outages. And so what do you want to do next? Well, give it a pat on yourself. Good job. But what exactly what you want is probably to plot a visual story, write a visual story. And as those, that story is by telling that story is via dashboards, we would like to call that as visual story. So when you try to plot and write or record a visual story of your debugging workflow, what should be the first part of it? The first aspect in that story should be the ability of you to transform your data. Your data could be in metrics, your data could be in logs, but you should be able to query your data, uh, write queries, graph those uh, results from a logs query or a metric query in a single panel. So let's start with that. And this is exactly how the panel builder UI by design looks like. So when you go to the new dashboard, try to create a new panel. This is how it exactly looks like. I want you to take a closer look at that. You see the first metrics query building experience. So we have been working hard on that metrics query building experience because essentially a lot of your metrics are the key value pairs, right? You, so why not just build a autocomplete key value pair so that things becomes pretty easier. It's a sentence case. It's more like a, this tag based thing in this metrics query row lets you read that query much better. So on the log side, it's a familiar query building experience what you have in search. Same kind of syntax highlighting, built-in validation, static auto completions, and so forth. And this is an example of how exactly or what I mean by unification of logs and metrics. These column charts are getting plotted by the log queries, whereas it's getting beautifully overlaid over the metric trend of the CPU. And it's showing a beautiful correlations out there. So that is how you make 2 plus 2 greater than 4 basically combining two of the rows and getting a value more than just a summation. Not just building panels from the UI, just fancy clicks, right? You should be also be, uh, we have been working together to uh, focusing on the JSON tab. You should be able to just copy paste from one panel to the other and just it, it just works. You have a very fine, refined control over this JSON because, you know, in charting, you have a lot of options, but giving all those options in UI might just not work. It might look so cluttered. So we would be working hard to on this part of the aspect of making the JSON tab 
uh, enabling you to give more and more refined controls out there so that you can copy paste all the visual settings from one panel to the other. So now you see that how the next gen dashboards truly helps you to transform your data to provide some greater value. So what's next, right? We were talking about your visual story. So you created lots of meaningful panels, but you might have created lots of panels. How do you enable someone reading your story to just quickly identify their point of interest? How are you promoting that fact like you should look at this particular thing? Which brings me to the second aspect of the problem. It's nothing but identifying the patterns. And let's just walk through how the next generation dashboards exactly helps you to identify your trends, identify the patterns, your points of interest in a much, much efficient manner. And with that, I'd be starting with this first feature, walking through, so time series as tables and bars, or time series as distribution. What I mean by that? This chart might be f pretty familiar to you. Pl you plot lots of CPU usages, lots of time series, cluttered data, lots of data, providing, uh, getting value out of it, becomes a bit difficult, right? Because many a times you are not interested about individual data points in a time series and you just want that which time series has the highest aggregated value. So here we provide you the ability, no operation magic, just plotting that same query in a distribution type of panel lets you aggregate a time series over your choice of uh, aggregation. It can be you want to sum all the points, average it out, max it out, or any choice of aggregation. What it good it brings? It gives you the quick overview information. It helps you to sort the columns, uh, sort the, if you're plotting these things in a table, you just on the UI, you just sort it by the column header. And with this metrics, which is essentially a time series as of now, you have the ability to plot a metrics in a pie bar, column, or any kind of distribution type of charts, which was earlier not possible for metrics kind of visualization. With that, I'd like to take a pause. This looks familiar. All the keynotes, all the demos have one thing in common till now. What is that? It at least has one honeycomb panel. Because honeycombs are awesome. Uh, yeah, it's just the synonymous of awesome. Why is that? What makes honeycombs truly awesome? Let's first just take a one minute to understand what is exactly these honeycomb visualizations. Well, uh, you see, we were speaking about converting the aggregations from time series to aggregate value. Honeycombs are exactly that. Each of these time series are now represented by a hexagonal block, and their color value is nothing but mapping these aggregated values against a predefined threshold you define. So if you define something goes red, it shows red, right? And if you do not specify any certain threshold, specific threshold, it just gets defaulted to a single color because many a times you do not know what the exact thresholds are. So what makes Honeycomb awesome? Awesome. It gives you an overview. It is a pretty compact way of telling your story, giving an entire information of your stack at just one panel, a single panel, giving all the information you need in a very compacted manner. Enabling spotting anomalies very quickly, again by color intensity. We have been speaking earlier about the multi-dimension aspect of honeycombs. Now this is where, uh, again, another UI magic over there. You and Jess, we have been talking about, Christian spoke about metadatas. So this honeycomb panel exactly leverages those metadatas uh, ingesting uh, from your data, ingested from your data, and this uh, enabling you to group your entire stack of data by that dimension you choose to group group it, right? So now you can group by that particular uh, uh, any any particular metadata you choose to, and establish a very good correlations if you want to see. Another one uh, pain point we have been hearing from all the dashboard users, maybe internal, maybe external, is a consistent coloring, right? You have many times, you know, lots of panels have similar kind of series name. And they have, um, almost all of them panels have a similar kind of series name. And I have to every time look at one panel, what is this color, what does that series represent? And again, go back to another panel and look like, what does that represent? Right, so this kind of every time mental switching and this cognitive load, here we are to solve that problem and hereby we announce that any of the new dashboard panels have this feature of consistent series coloring by which 
any every series name has a unique color assigned to it and no matter in which visual order they appear in any of the panels they get the same color uh, assigned so if you are seeing a wall dashboard in your wall dashboard you need not to bother about doing this reverse mapping every time that what color represents what value do it once it if we just solve that for all of it with that we solved the what problem you created panels you helped your colleague who was reading your story to identify what was wrong and next we want to show that what is the why part which is nothing but gathering more insights around that that something went wrong let us see why well hover based interactions many a times aggregation do not tell you yeah it doesn't tell you every time the true story there might be something like red but that might be cause some spike way above the time range so just hover over it get the underlying time series in in the tool tip to validate your thought and hypothesis with the second aspect context aware drill down so now while troubleshooting you have gathered lots of context right this particular source category this particular source source at a particular time at with a particular metric in a particular time range has a problem we enable you to just with a click ahead open the underlying logs that's been causing the problem filling all this meta information the contextual information that you have gained till now to these ad hoc log searches which just works fine for you and this is an example with that with that i'd like to hand over to abhi uh, to show us a very real life experience how all this fits together to make your experience awesome thank you ian so we at sumo consume our own technology so we also pipe our own data internally back into sumo and we use it to troubleshoot our own situations so while not a real situation, it is based off of a real situation. I'm going to walk you through kind of how we use these same feature sets internally to help optimize that process. So let's say searches are running slow inside of Sumo, something we all hope doesn't happen, but occasionally it does. Um, we get an alert. That alert yields a, you know, requires a engineer to go look at a panel that enables them to go look at the tiers and how the tiers are corresponding to SLO violations. Here they're able to see in this multi-log query panel that they have a um, SLO violation that's correlated with their highest tier or single kata tier. So they're able to isolate down to one tier. From there, they're able to go to a honeycomb view that allows them to see the different nodes inside of that tier for memory usage, CPU, and disk usage. They're able to isolate the metric that they think is you know, causing or cause of that concern, see the underlying trend, see it's been running hot for the entire five minute period. And with a click of a button, they're able to drill down to the underlying logs for the application running on that node to actually understand what's causing that spike, what's causing that SLO violation underneath that um, search tier. And with that, they're able to, with just clicks, go from a problem point all the way down towards really close to the solution and digging further. And that's what we're trying to enable. We want to make sure that you're able to go from those high-level hypotheses into those details as quickly as possible. Now that we've talked a little bit about what's coming out with next-gen dashboards today, I want to take a step back and talk about where are we going even further than that. We've heard this over and over and over again, that you want to be able to export to PDF and PNG, and you want to be able to schedule those exports. We're making that happen internally, and look forward to it coming out soon as a part of that closed beta. Furthermore, we're announcing a programmatic dashboard API as a part of that closed beta that's coming out soon. That'll enable you to actually create, manage, retrieve, update, and delete your dashboards via APIs, so that way you can check them in with your entire GitOps process. Whenever you create a new service, you're able to launch a new set of dashboards, template them, make sure that everything you launch is also compatible and ready to go inside of Sumo Logic. And finally, we're taking a hard look at how to get your real-time dashboarding working and providing and examining other options as well as expanding those group by and um, count restrictions through things like auto-refresh dashboards, which enable you to have greater control on the refresh rate as well as improvements underlying that as well. In summary, we can kind of break down next-gen dashboard benefits into four major categories. Visual storytelling, unified analytics, layered insights, and external sharing. And the highlights within each category are fine-grained visual control, all visualizations, all data streams, overlays between your logs and your metrics, going back to that conversation of getting more value out of both data streams. Layered insights so you can actually drill deeper, get insights via peaks and other quick iterations without having to actually click through or create new searches. And external sharing so that way you can actually share your dashboards outside of the Sumo ecosystem and make sure that those other stakeholders who may not be inside are able to see that same value. In conclusion, I hope you were able to actually agree with me that next-gen dashboards are awesome 
and that you're able to transform your data with ease, isolate patterns quickly, and get deeper insights effortlessly. Contact your sales rep today to ask about the closed beta. And thank you so much. So much, Abhi and Ayan. With this, I would open the floor for questions. So please feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, I have a question on the honeycomb panel. Like when you right click and get the like view all logs errors, is that customizable? Like, can we have our own options there, or how does it know? Yeah, can we customize it? So um, at the moment you have just that logs drill down, but a little bit more on that future roadmap of where we see that type of interaction going. Uh, we want to enable various different automatic pivots through that. And we were kind of thinking about it more in terms of now that we have this metadata rich environment across all these different data streams, we can actually look at that metadata that we have about the object you're clicking on and think about the metadata of the objects inside of Sumo you've created, whether that be other dashboards, whether it be saved searches, and actually be able to suggest those to you as pivot points off of that object. That's where we were headed at it, but happy to circle back afterwards and see if there are use cases for kind of customizable pivots as well. Hey, thank you. I have a question regarding uh, coming back to the dashboard uh, and all that new things that's coming up. It's good, but do we have any option to embed an image or a text to reference some kind of, you know, if I'm making up a story right there to show to the ops teams to say, hey, 80% of this system is okay, but 50% about this particular application is a bad. So that kind of reference, I cannot jot it down on the same pane of glass. Is, is there even that kind of a thing in your product roadmap? In terms of text panels and image panels, is that a valid kind of summarization of the question? Yeah. Um, we do have text panels today within the next-gen dashboards, and we're actively working on making sure that images are also possible. With regards to exporting dashboards and treating them as embeddable objects in other situations like external websites, etc., that's something we're aware of and something that we're definitely is on our roadmap. Exactly where it'll fall is going to be decided. Thank you. Uh, another question is about the auto refresh for the dashboards. How different is that with the live dashboards and then the refresh two minutes or a minute intervals? What's the difference? So one thing we've heard over and over again is that live mode has restrictions, and live mode oftentimes is flaky. Um, and so this is a kind of our way of taking a hard look at not only the technical level of like how do we make that better, but also in terms of the flexibility that you can get out of just interactive searches um, and using interactive searches to kind of drive that real-time experience. Thank you. We can take a few more questions if you have. The availability of these uh, features, uh, besides the future roadmap, um, are these all available now in the closed beta? Or could you explain, I, I, maybe I missed it, but could you explain the availability of the, the features that you described? Everything not in the future roadmap section is available now in the closed beta. So if you ask your sales rep about the closed beta or contact support, um, we can kind of talk about how do you get yourself in. Is it on a user by user basis or is it enabled for the entire enterprise? Um, we generally do an enterprise by enterprise basis, but we can work with you to kind of figure out the right closed beta environment for you. Thanks. Any more questions? Cool. Uh, that's a wrap then. Thank you so much again, Abhi and Ayan, for sharing the next generation dashboard story.